so it's 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 really been fun for us to get to go on this sort of space adventure together. Um, you know, like we met at a space conference, and you know, we both had this passion for space. I've been passionate about space ever since I was six years old. Um, you know, I remember like playing spaceship under the stairs at my you know cousin's house and stuff like that. Um, and in 2004, uh, we had the opportunity to train to work for Zero Gravity Corporation. Um, you know, at that time, that was you know the well, it's right, even still right now, it's the closest you can come <laughs> to going into space, you know, sort of commercially. Um, we so we've been flying since 2004. I'm one of nine flight directors um, for the company, so we're FAA certified flight attendants. Basically, I could I know how to point with two fingers, um, and I know how to put an oxygen mask on. Um, but it's a lot of fun. We uh, we have a 727, uh, and we uh, it's all cargo plane. So the seat we have seats in the back, but the whole rest of the plane is all um, open. Uh, and did padded so you can just look at this float around free and um, that's my mom I got to bring her on a flight once and it's uh, it's really an amazing experience I've done it you know almost a hundred times now I've done almost a hundred flights now uh, and we, we fly out of uh, Florida and um, Las Vegas most regularly but we also sometimes do special flights in San, San Jose and LA and stuff and charters uh, and it's about five thousand dollars to do the flight and you do you know the training and then you, but the experience of just floating weightless is just such a, an extraordinary, like, amazing, it, it, for me it felt like, you know, so natural, like going home, like back in the womb, like you just, at first it's so bizarre, and like physics doesn't behave the way you're used to, you're like, your brain is like, whoa, 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 what's up with that, it's not supposed to do that, you know, but it's funny, it's those of us who fly a lot, you know, we, you get adapted really quick, and so we know how to move in surgery and like get from one side of the plane to the other, and like the people who are their first time are like, ah. um, but it's really, and if you ever get the chance to do it, it's an um, uh, amazing opportunity uh, just to sort of shift your consciousness around a little bit um, and get a little taste of what it'll be like when we go into space. Uh, and, uh, one of the things that we're most proud of as a company is when we flew uh, Dr. Stephen Hawking. Um, you know, he's only got uh, muscle control of like a couple of muscles in his face. And that's it. And um, when we, you know, we we define mission success on this flight as one one parabola, getting him to be able to experience weightlessness and being free of his wheelchair, you know, once. And uh, he was just having such an amazing time that we ended up he ended up demanding eight parabolas from his doctors, <laughs> uh, like I can do it, you know, you know, communicating with them how he does. Um, and it was just as the biggest smile I've ever seen on his face. Um, I also got invited to be on an expedition with James Cameron. I'm, I'm trained as an astrobiologist, you know, when I was doing the academic thing. Um, and he was looking for scientists to take with him to the bottom of the ocean, to the hydrothermal vent sites in the middle of the Atlantic and some in the Pacific Rim um, for a documentary he was making. And um, so these are some, some photos from that, those, that experience. And I, I share it because that was sort of my other, you know, the other analog, the other way I play space, you know, it's like, it's kind of like a Soyuz capsule, it's about, you know, it's a small diameter titanium sphere with a Russian pilot, it's pretty cool, um, you know, and you got, and there's three of us in there, and it's a confined space for many hours, and extreme temperatures, and, and, and it's an extreme environment, you know, there's no 911 out in the middle of the Pacific, you know, nobody, I'm mean, sorry, the Atlantic, no one's gonna, you know, there's no helicopter can land on the, on the boat, no plane can, you know, it's like, you're on your own. So you really had to deal with a lot of the risk. It got, the risk of what we do got more real for me when I was like choosing to climb into this vehicle and drop to the bottom of the seafloor, you know, two, two hours down, two hours underwater, two hours straight down. You know, you're like, wait, what if I don't come back? You know, you have to really, you know, before all, all my generation were all cavalier, I'd go to Mars one way, you know, like, but when you actually have to do it, you know, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting, Experience. Uh, so this is us. The bottom, bottom, one of the one of the dives we did um, in the hydrothermal vents. Some of the crazy animals we saw. I love these guys. This is like these like blinking neon lights. I didn't want to tell anyone about them because I thought they'd think I was crazy. But then I saw it in a science textbook, so it's, I can talk about it. <laughs> um, and after the so that was 2003, and then. Uh, Richard Branson also got involved, decided he wanted to get involved with some ocean stuff, so they sponsored a, a, 
a new submarine, submersible, to dive to the bottom of the Mariana's Trench, which is the deepest point in the ocean, like a big canyon in the sea floor. Uh, and so we're so I'm doing some consulting for them right now, which is sort of fun. So I get to sort of use some of my ocean background and uh, some of my virgin family connections um, to be involved with that project, which has been a lot of fun as well. Um, so one of the things that George and I did uh, once we started dating, so we, you know, we were just colleagues, you know, then something happened. Um, <laughs> But we decided we wanted to go into space together. It was sort of like, wait, you can't go into space without me. I'm like, well, you can't go into space without me. So we decided we should go together. So we bought um, honeymoon tickets to fly with Galactic. And it's been a really amazing time. Um, it's a fun, fun company to be a part of. Um, we got to do some centrifuge testing, uh, which was cool, because I'd never experienced six Gs before. You know, I'd experienced zero G. But uh, six Gs, you know, isn't a whole different matter. It's not nearly as fun as zero, I'll tell you. It's, uh, it's actually incredibly uh, un uh, uncomfortable. Luckily, on, on the Virgin uh, spaceship, you only do it for like 0.2 seconds or something. So, but in the centrifuge, they let us do it for like two seconds, you know, just to you know show how tough we are. Um, but uh, it, it, it was so it was just cool, just to try, you know, just get to try different things. Actually, we um, during the centrifuge runs, they did a they do a half profile run, like a, a warm up run, you know, just. A lower, a lower G profile, just to sort of get your, you know, run you through what it, the launch would be like and what the, and the whole thing. And then they said, then they, okay, when you're done with that, then you'll do the 100% G run. It'll do the, will give you the full profile. And I was like so into it. I was like so focused. I was like so in the moment and pretending it was really happening and I was really on my mission. I was really there. I like could get into space and I really felt the zero G when the centrifuge stopped. And then I was like, we came back down. And I was just like so emotionally spent from like having been gone on my first space trip, and I was like, wow, that was awesome. They're like, okay, great, are you ready for the 100% run now? And I was like, no, I can't just go back in this space, I just go back. You know? So it was, it's, it's a fun, fun uh, experience. We also got to go to the unveiling of Spaceship Two um, in Mojave which in, in December, which was crazy. Um, and then these are just the slides I always like to, to give people who are passionate about these things like I am. Um, it's just that reminder, you know, just the, what it takes to do these amazing things uh, is just to keep dreaming big. Um, uh, you know, if, 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 if someone tells you it's, imposs it's impossible, then you're probably on the right track. <laughs> um, and the other, the other one is to ask for help. Like, it, you know, it took 400,000 people to put a man on the moon. You know, the, the things we're doing require us to work together. It's more than any one of us can do on our own. And it really takes a skill set of being able to connect with other people, get them excited about what you're doing, and work and put aside whatever challenges come up and to keep working together. And that's a really important skill set for all of us to keep developing, all, you know, especially, like, you know, people really talented and smart and done things on their own. It's like learning how to matrix that and like use all of human talent to make things happen is real. It's like sort of the next level that I'm excited about. And then never give up, you know, fall down six times, get up seven. You know, that's what it takes is like, just gotta keep, keep going for it. So um, that's a little bit about me. I'll turn it back to uh, my sweetheart here. <laughs> Uh, we could probably keep talking, but why don't we see if anybody has any questions about what we've uh, done? Maybe there's a chance to have a little bit of discussion there. Yeah. So you may not be able to answer this, but when is the first uh, commercial version of Black Sea Flight going to happen? When it's ready. <laughs> when it's ready. Yeah, I mean, we're getting closer. Um, it's uh, uh, We're hoping to do powered flight tests this year, and then. Uh,